Hey, good evening. It's uh, Friday, August 16th, and welcome back to Everyday Talks 24-7. <laughs> thank you for being here. Again, thank you to God for just uh, allowing the moon having the background. I want to talk again about how our words are important. And here's a way that we may not think about it. But your words, my words, they reveal our mental health. Our words actually reveal the condition of our mental health. And for a Christian, good mental health occurs when our hearts, thoughts, our words, the words whether we speak or whether we self-talk to ourselves, our thoughts, words, and actions, along with our hearts, align with how God runs the world, how God made us to be. The result of this type of good mental health, where we our, our words, our thoughts, our actions, our self-talk, is in line, in sync with how well, God runs his world, the result is peace. Not necessarily easy times, but peace, because we can be settled that we're doing what God wants us to do, and we align with where he wants us to be. So how do your words, my words, reveal our mental health? Well, let's take a brief survey here. We have a way to identify good and bad words. In Matthew chapter 7, verses 17 and 18, Jesus says, every good tree bears good fruit, but a bad tree bears bad fruit. A good tree cannot bear bad fruit, and a bad tree cannot bear good fruit. We have a way to it, we know, and we're going to look at it a little bit. God tells us what words, what language, as we've been looking at this week, is in sync with the way he wants us to function. And then we need a little more, a little further in Matthew, a little more down the road, Matthew 15, 15 verses 8, and then skipping to verse 18. They're all in sync here, they all fit. It shows how our words demonstrate whether we are genuine and authentic, or whether we're hypocrites. Cows agree with that one, so I'm thankful for that. They're not too far away. Whether our words are authentic, they show genuineness, or whether they demonstrate hypocrisy. Do we say one thing and do another, or are we consistent with what God's called us to be? In Matthew 15, verse 8, Jesus is quoting Isaiah 29 and the problem with the Israelite people that had wandered away from trusting God is that these people honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. That's the definition of hypocrisy. We say one thing and we, we honor God with the things that we say, but internally we're serving ourselves. That's hypocrisy. And then Jesus identifies it even more closely in verse 18 of, of this chapter 15. He says, but the things that come out of a person's mouth come from the heart. And those are the things that defile him, not the outward actions. So you see, this points us to the importance of being in sync with God, living in alignment with him, if our mental health is going to be stable and good. So we've been looking at the importance of our words. If we're to be aligned with God, our words must be used for the purposes that he intended. And this week, if you check out the previous videos, we've been doing that. We've been seeing what has God called us to. So we're supposed to speak the truth in love. That's what Ephesians 4.15 says. Speak the truth in love. We're supposed to speak words that build up. As a matter of fact, Paul says in Ephesians 4.29, say only those things that are going to be built up. Don't let any rotten words come out of your mouth. We're supposed to speak words of hope and correction. 2 Timothy 2.25 says, gently instruct those who oppose you. Ephesians 6.4 is saying to fathers and to parents, Build up your children, nourish them. Don't provoke them to anger, but rather 
nourish them up in the fear and admonition of the Lord. We've got to say words to do that, but we've got to do it in ways that build up, not create stress. We do this by using pleasant words, Proverbs 16, 20 to 24, where even if we're delivering something which is a corrective, it's not done in harshness, it's not done in condensation. It's done in consideration for that person. We speak gentle words, Proverbs 15, 1 to 4. Gentle words, what do they do? They ease the conflict. They bring gentleness. They make the other, they, they, it says it turns away the wrath of God. When we don't use gentle words, we're going to stir things up and create problems. And then there are many verses, many passages you could go here, but then the last I'm going to look at tonight is Philippians 2, 3, where we are to show respect for people, show respect for God, for the one who made these people. So Philippians 2, 3 says, in humility, consider others more important than yourself. Do our words re represent that? A respect for God, the one who made this person, the person made in God's image. Even if they're being off the wall and wrong, we can still speak with respect because God calls us to. You see, when we choose to speak words that are not aligned with God's direction, God's purpose, then we're being wise in our own eyes. In other words, I'm, I've got a better way to do it than what God says. These things that I just read, these are not options. When we turn to choose to go away from them, we're being wise in our own eyes. When we live out of our, our own eyes, our own wisdom, we are living out of sync, out of alignment with how God designed us to function, and particularly in relationships. And Proverbs speaks directly to that. Proverbs 3, 7 to 8 says this, Do not be wise in your own eyes, but fear the Lord and turn away from evil. And then if you are wise in your own eyes, that's not good. But if you are, if you do, or if you're wise in God's eyes, if you turn away from evil and honor God, then this brings health to your body and nourishment to your bones. The word body there, it's a little misleading. It's really in the Hebrew for navel. And what that means is that's the center of your gut, your, all of your emotional gut feeling center. That's what it's being talked about here. So he's not being redundant when he says health to your body and nourishment to your bones. Bones are your physical body, this stuff right here, the flesh. But navel is this emotional center where we are. If I'm wise in my own eyes, I'm going to upset my emotional center. I'm going to bring damage to my physical body. That's what Proverbs are telling us. So when we use words that are consistent with our own wisdom, our mental health is going to be out of line, out of sync, and it's not going to function well. Literally. The result is we will suffer mentally, emotionally, and physically. When we choose to speak in our own language, our own ways, our own words, when we ignore the way God made us to function in this world, we're going to be out of sync with what He called us to be about. And that's going to wreak havoc with us. Brothers and sisters, our words matter. It's not about getting it right and wrong and on a checklist. It's being in sync with the God of the universe. And the result is mental health that is in line with the way God made us so that our thoughts, our actions, our words, and our hearts are aligned with God, and that brings peace. You can love your thoughts, your feedback. Thank you so much for being here. This is important material. So, again, look forward to hearing from you about it. Thanks so much for being here. And Lord willing, we'll see you tomorrow. Have a great night. Bye-bye.